take another step. I can't go another day without you, without you. It's okay for just a moment to pour our love on him. Tell him you love him. Let your actions prove to him you love him this morning. Amen. What a presence of the Lord that has met us here this morning. The power of God is here in a very real and rich way. And anything is possible in this room this morning. Hope you believe that. I hope we take the word of the Lord that Sister Mangan was given us and that we step into that and claim that for our lives as well, that anything is possible in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen and amen. Thank you, worship team, for leading us to the throne room, the presence of God we feel here. Let's give them a hand. We can make our way back to our seats this morning. Thank you for your worship. Thank you to this great church. This is the greatest church in all of the world. It's my honor to be able to lead here and pastor you with the assistance of Pastor Andrew and Pastor Ryan and Pastor Gary and Bishop. This is the greatest church in the world with the greatest people in the world. I say that to lead into, this is our final day to give to our All Nations Sunday. Uh, today is the last Sunday to close that up. There are still some brown envelopes floating around campus if you would like to give to All Nations Sunday. And I will give you a preview because I think we told you we'd tell you today, even though I should probably wait till next Sunday. But this church sacrificially gave as of Thursday, and we still have today to count, but as of Thursday, you gave $485,000 in one service. <clears throat> I can't hear what you're saying. I will. Thank you. That is 200 plus over what you gave last year. We gave right at 230, 250 last year. You gave 485 this year with everything that's going on in the world, with inflation where it is. Thank you to this great church for your giving. All of that will go to missions. Thank you for your missions-minded mentality of helping to spread the gospel throughout this world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you have your Bibles today because I will be preaching out of the Word of God and I will be reading a lot of Scripture today. I won't be preaching a whole lot. I'll be reading a whole lot. But I promise you, I can't out-preach this. There's nothing I can say that's any better that's written in here. We're going to go over some things today. We're going to talk about some things today. If you have your Bible, Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm going to talk to you this morning about we are at war. We are at war. And you can be seated this morning. If you think this sermon, my topic and where I'm headed is similar to what I preached just two weeks ago, put a nail in it, you would be right. But I can't shake what I feel the Lord has given me to preach to this congregation. I do hope you have your Bibles. I'm going to read a lot of scripture today. Yesterday, we saw America's greatest ally infiltrated and attacked by Hamas a terrorist organization that operates out of Gaza. They are well-funded by and have the support of Iran. It's pretty ironic that this attack took place right after we give Iran $6 billion. Their unwarranted attack yesterday killed over what is known 300 Israelis, and that toll is certain to climb to more than 500. We will now see that a chain of events will be set off that will affect civilians on both sides. Thank you for asking for prayer for both sides, Pastor Andrew. Both sides of the conflict, people and civilians are in harm's way. 
Lex and I have personal friends who are Palestinian whose family lives in Palestine. Their families are there, and I pray that they are safe during this time and season. A warning has been issued to all Palestinian civilians to vacate Gaza because what was quoted yesterday, Israel is about to turn to rubble all of Hamas's known hiding places. After this attack yesterday, Prime Minister Netanyahu declared, we are at war. And Israel's government formally declared today, we are at war. Look at what is going on across the globe. All of Europe is on the brink. It's on edge with the Russia-Ukrainian conflict that our country keeps writing blank checks for. China is a threat to invade Taiwan at any moment. When you look at the list of ongoing conflicts, almost the whole continent of Africa is in war. Our southern border, ladies and gentlemen, is a disaster and is a major part of the drug war that is taking place in Mexico right now. The Bible makes it very clear what we are seeing. We are in the end time. Wars and rumors of wars. If you have your Bible, let's look at Luke chapter 21, starting in verse 7. They asked, saying, Master, when shall all these things be? What sign will there be when all these things shall come to pass? He said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. There's a lot of false doctrines and preaching going on today. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto, the, unto them, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord is soon to come. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, famines, pestilences, fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. California and New York are flooding. Louisiana is pumped about an inch of rain. But before all of these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. If you don't think religious liberties are being threatened, not just overseas, but right here in America, then you are being naive. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay and resist, and ye shall be betrayed by your parents, by your brethren and kinfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. You'll be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair on your head perish, and your patience possess your souls, and ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon his people. They shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles under the time of Gentiles be fulfilled and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars, the earth, distresses of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts shall fail them for fear and for looking for those things which are coming on earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. 
The Lord is soon to come. Those verses are being fulfilled in this world. Though we may not see all of them come to pass in America, that doesn't mean they are taking place in this world. When these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. The Lord is soon to come. Pay attention this morning, folks. Stay with me. We may not be out super, super early. Listen today. We are close to the coming of the Lord. It's palpable. You can sense it. You can feel it. There's too many prophecies lining up. We have reached a point where our world has to be approaching, has to be approaching the days of Noah. Certainly it couldn't be any worse than it is now. We must be getting close to how it was in Sodom and Gomorrah. We are at the end. You can feel it. You can sense it. You can see it. And if we can see all these things lining up, if we can feel all these things lining up, if we see all of these prophecies coming to pass, then you better believe Satan does as well. And because we are so close to the end, Satan is on the loose trying to take as many people to the pit of hell with him that he can. I want everyone under the sound of my voice to know we are living in the end times. We are on the precipice of the return of the king. And Satan cannot stand the fact that when he returns, he's coming back for a bride that will be taken with him. Satan hates that. Satan hates it. He hates it. Because he hates it, because he knows that there will be those in the bride of Christ, he is going to do everything he can to come after us, our loved ones, our friends. He's doing everything he can, everything that is within him to steal us at the last moment, to steal us from the bride of Christ at this very late hour that we are in. And I have come here on this Sunday morning to declare along with Prime Minister Netanyahu, we are at war. We are at war. If Israel is at war in the natural, you better believe the church is at war in the spiritual. Israel and the church are connected, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Old Testament church. It's the New Testament church. If Israel's fighting, the church better be fighting. We are at war. We're at war together in the spiritual realm. The one that we cannot see with our natural eye. There is a war that is raging for your soul, for my soul, for the soul of my family. And I've been sent by the Lord this morning to warn us once again that the enemy of our soul would love to seek and to destroy. And I'm here to tell us, let's put a nail in it this morning. We are seeing things that we have never seen before in our country and in our world. We are at war. Wokeism. Science is God movement. Evil men, seducers, waxing worse and worse, deceiving, being deceived. Deception is running rampant. The onslaught that we receive daily telling us that we have to sit by and condone every lifestyle no matter how repugnant it is to the Word of God. With homosexuality and transgenderism getting all the press, it is deception from the father of deception. I want this world system to know man is still man, woman is still woman. Don't try to teach my kid any different. It's deception. People's minds are deceived.
You don't get to change what you are biologically. It's a lie from the enemy. It's straight from the pits of hell. He's using the spirit of deception like I've never seen before. Instead of our media standing up for what is right, they just keep cramming it down our throats. And they call us religious bigots for speaking what's in the Bible. We're at war. We're at war. According to the National Center for Drug Abuse Statistics, 50% of people 12 and older have tried illicit drugs. There has been over 700,000 drug overdoses since the year 2000. 35 billion was the federal budget for drug control in 2020. He's attacking us any way that he can. How can I steal their soul? How can I deceive them? How can I get them hooked on a substance? How can I plunge them into immorality? What can I do to confuse and confound them? 138 million Americans, 12 and older, drink alcohol. 28 million, 20% 20 of that 138 million have alcohol disorder. We are at war. Idolism, materialism, love of money, hatred, envy, sex, pornography, impurity, only fans seemingly at a higher level than ever before. The shift towards one world government. The dollar is losing its power. We are headed to a one world currency, which if I was to guess is going to be some sort of crypto. It's all adding up. It's all shaping up. There is churches in America right now that are condoning these illicit acts. There are churches in America right now, right this moment, being pastored by gay men and women openly married to the same sex pastors. There's churches putting on conferences that are affirming these abominable acts as God calls it. It's all pointing towards a one world church where you can worship who you want, when you want, and how you want, and the principles of the Word of God are just thrown out the window. We are at war. Paul Harvey in 1965 predicted what was to come in his radio broadcast if I were the devil. If I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I'd seized the ripest apple on the tree, the so I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old I would teach to pray after me, O oh, Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors on how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families that war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions. Just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography 
Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbols of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want until I'd killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what do you bet I could get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich? I would caution against extremes and hard work and patriotism and moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be, and thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey, have a good day. How on point was that? from something 58 years ago. That's where we are. We are at war. And the enemy is making his final push. It's like Hitler and Nazi Germany making their last push at the Battle of the Bulge. They knew the war was over, but they made one last offensive. That's where Satan is. The battle is over. I know I've lost the war. The Lord is soon to come and all the signs are lining up. But I'm going to make one final push for the souls of man. So my, what must we do on this Sunday morning? We must fight. We are at war. We must pick up arms. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We're at war, and we've got some mighty weapons. We've got the weapon of prayer. We've got the weapon of sacrifice. We've got the weapon of the Word. We've got the weapon of unity. We've got spiritual weapons. We're at war. Let's pick them up. Let's go to battle. Let's go fight. Our God is a warrior. Yes, he is. Exodus 15 and 3 is part of the song of Moses and Miriam. They loudly declare in 15 and 3 of Exodus, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is His name. Newer translations say the Lord is a warrior. He's a fighter. And He's never lost a battle. The Lord's a warrior. He's fighting and He's fighting for us. So what does Scripture encourage us to do in these last days as we are fighting for our souls and the souls of our loved ones? Ephesians 6 tells us very plainly, beginning in verses 10 through 18, we all know it very well. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Remember, the Lord is a warrior. Let's be strong in His might. He's never lost a battle. So put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so that we can stand in these last days with everything that is coming against us personally and against the church. If we want to be able to stand in these last days, we need the armor of God. The church will stand because the gates of hell shall not prevail. And I want to be a part of the church. I don't want to be a warrior that falls to the wayside. So I've got to put on the whole armor of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in that evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Truth, truth. Let me tell you what is true. This right here is true. It's just supposed to cover us and guard us. This is true. It speaks truth. No matter whose feelings it may offend, it speaks truth. It tells us how to be saved. It tells us how to live righteously. 
It tells us to repent. It tells us to be baptized in the name of Jesus. It tells us to be full of the Holy Ghost. That's truth. I don't care what anybody else says. That's truth. I don't care what other preachers or doctrine is being said or quoted or misinterpreted. Truth, truth, truth. What will guard you, what will cover your loins is truth. The apostolic message of the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's truth. The gospels tell us how to live. Paul writes to us and tells us how to live and how to act and how to be Christ-like. How to have righteous living. It gives us the how-tos. That's how we fight in this evil day. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We are called to live and to walk in peace. Not the peace that the world gives, but peace that comes from the one who overcame the world. Peace that comes from reading this book. Peace that comes through daily communion with Him. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You want to know how we defeat the enemy? Get full of faith. We must have faith in this battle against our adversary who at this very last moment, who before the Lord comes back, the trump sounds, wants to steal you. We must have faith to fight this adversary. Faith that God is with us. Faith that God will supply our every need. Faith that God will see us through every trial and circumstance. Faith, remember, without it, it's impossible to please God. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I love talking about the helmet of salvation. That's the blood being applied to my life. Salvation, when I go under in the name of Jesus, I have the name called over me and I have the blood applied to my life. If the blood's applied to my life, then I can put the helmet of salvation on and I can plead the blood over my mind because that's where the battle is, ladies and gentlemen. That's where the fight is, right here, right between our two ears. The enemy's doing everything he can to get this messed up. I got to put on the helmet of salvation. I got to have the blood applied to my life. If you're battling like you've never battled and you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, don't you walk out these doors today without having the blood applied to your life. Got to have the blood over my mind. He's deceiving so many. The blood of Jesus must be over my life and my mind got to take this Word of God that's sharper than any two-edged sword and use it to my benefit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Watch thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying always. That doesn't leave us a whole lot of time for anything else. Praying always. It's a blueprint, ladies and gentlemen, for defeating Satan. We must enact these battle plans in our life because we are at war. We must get suited up and ready for battle. No more sitting on the sidelines. It's time to fight. It's time to prepare for battle. Let's go get ready for war. If you haven't been fighting, it's time to fight. It's time to suit up. It's time to suit up. Not with things of this world. Remember, Saul's armor didn't fit David. We aren't going to win this fight with anything from this natural world. It's not by might nor by power, but it is by His Spirit. We need to tell our Goliath. We need to tell that old serpent, Satan, who's seeking to drag all of us to hell with him. I need to tell him it's not the shield and it's not Saul's armor. It's not my own might or power. It's not what I can do in and of myself, but it is the armor of God. I come in the name of the Lord. I don't come with my sword and shield, but I come with the armor of the Lord. I come in the name of the Lord. And my Lord has never lost the battle. My Lord has never lost the fight. My God has never been defeated. He's a Lord of war. He's a Lord of war. That's who we are supported by in this fight is our warrior, our Lord who is a war. 
warrior that has never been defeated. We must be alert. We must be ready to fight this adversary. There's not much time left. The rapture of the church is nigh and he knows it. It's all lining up. The chaos, the sin, the immorality, the wars, the pestilences. The attention of the world is focused on Jerusalem. We are near the end. Don't get caught off guard. Don't get caught sleeping on guard duty. Don't get complacent now. Don't say I can get it right tomorrow. Don't say I can get baptized tomorrow. Don't say I can repent tomorrow. Don't say I can seek the Holy Ghost tomorrow. Don't say I can get things right with my family tomorrow. It's too close to the end. The trump of God could blow at any moment. We are on the precipice of the Lord coming back for His church. Don't get caught off guard. Don't get caught sleeping. We're at war. We're in the midst of a battle. We're fighting for our souls. We're fighting for our family. We're fighting for our friends. Don't get caught sleeping now. Don't get caught off guard now. There's a war that's raging. There's a war that's raging. It's time to jump on the battlefield. It's time to go to war. Let's all stand together. I'm nowhere near done. I got so many more scriptures, it's crazy, but the Lord is here. The Lord is here. I was going to have us quote about 20 verses. But the Lord is here. This is a battlefield. We're at war. We can't sit on the sidelines anymore. We can't stand idle anymore. The world's coming at us, so we better be ready to defend ourselves and go on attack as well. I'm not going to let this world system at the very last moment steal me away, steal my family away. I'm not going to let Hollywood, I'm not going to let my government, I'm not going to let the media, I'm not going to let this world system right here at the end take me to hell. We're on a battlefield. I wish you would grab your family by the hand. Come down with your family. Grab your family and make your way to this front. We're on the battlefield. We're on the battlefield. Those of you in the balcony, you can come to the rail. Those of you in the back house, if you can't get all the way to the front, you can line up in that back aisle. Get with your family. We're going to join together as family. We're at war. We're at war. Somebody else have an unction. Somebody else let an unction go forth. Let there be a travail go forth. Let there be a battle cry go forth. Come on, men and women of Zion. Let there be a battle cry. Let's take down the walls of Jericho. Let there be a battle cry go forth. We're at war. The devil's not going to get me here at the end. The devil's not going to get my family here at the end. I'm going to be ready when the trump sounds and when he comes back for the bride of Christ. I'm going to be in that number. My family's going to be in that number.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Priests of the home, priests of the home, fathers and husbands, begin to lay your hands on your spouse and on your kids. And you pray a hedge of protection over your family right now. Every leader of the home, if you're a single parent, mom or dad, you do the same. If you're single, find some family to link up with. Have somebody pray over you. Come on, priest of the home. Pray over your spouse. Pray over your kids. is not in turmoil we are being led by a warring God a God that is fighting for us a God that is doing battle for us to the coming of the Lord to give up now. We're too close to the coming of the Lord to give in to this world system now. Keep fighting. Put your trust in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God.
morning and the confidence we have that while we are at war, God is with us. And if he is with us, nothing can come against us and succeed. So wherever you are, whatever situation you are in, God is with you and he is going to give you the victory. Thanks be to God, which gives you the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We look forward to worshiping with you Wednesday night. Until then, go in the confidence that God is with you. In Jesus' name.